The Atharva Veda Sanskrit, Atharvaveda Atharvaveda from Atharvanas and Veda, meaning knowledge is the knowledge storehouse of Atharvanas, the procedures for everyday life. The text is the fourth Veda, but has been a late addition to the Vedic scriptures of Hinduism. The Atharvaveda is composed in Vedic Sanskrit, and it is a collection of 730 hymns with about 6,000 mantras, divided into 20 books. About a sixth of the Atharvaveda text adapts verses from the Rigveda, and except for books 15 and 16, the text is in poem form deploying a diversity of Vedic matters. Two different recensions of the text, the Pipalada and the Sonakya, have survived into modern times. Reliable manuscripts of the Pipalada edition were believed to have been lost, but a well-preserved version was discovered among a collection of palm-leaf manuscripts in Odisha in 1957. In contrast to the hieratic religion of the other three Vedas, the Atharvaveda is said to represent a popular religion, incorporating not only formulas for magic, but also the daily rituals for initiation into learning upanayana, marriage and funerals. Royal rituals and the duties of the court priests are also included in the Atharvaveda. Ayurveda, the traditional system of medicine in ancient India, suggests a link between this Veda and medicine. The Atharvaveda was likely compiled as a Veda contemporaneously with Samaveda and Yajurveda, or about 1200 BC to 1000 BC. Along with the Samhita layer of text, the Atharvaveda includes a Brahmana text, and a final layer of the text that covers philosophical speculations. The latter layer of Atharvaveda text includes three primary Upanishads, influential to various schools of Hindu philosophy. These include the Mandaka Upanishad, the Mandukya Upanishad and the Prashna Upanishad. Topic etymology and nomenclature The Veda may be named, states Monier Williams, after the mythical priest named Atharvan who was first to develop prayers to fire, offer soma, and who composed formulas and spells intended to counteract diseases and calamities. Monier Williams notes that the now obsolete term for fire used to be Athar. The name Atharvaveda, states Lori Patton, is for the text being Veda of the Atharvanas, the oldest name of the text, according to its own verse 10.7.20, was Atharvangirasa, a compound of Atharvan and Angiris, both Vedic scholars. Each school called the text after itself, such as Sonakya Samhita, meaning the compiled text of Sonakya. The Atharvan and Angiris names, states Maurice Bloomfield, imply different things, with the former considered auspicious while the latter implying hostile sorcery practices. Over time, the positive auspicious side came to be celebrated and the name Atharva Veda became widespread. The latter name Angiris which is linked to Agni and priests in the Vedas, states George Brown, may also be related to Indo-European Angiros found in an Aramaic text from Nippur. Michael Witzel states Atharvan roots may be asterisk Atharwan or ancient priest, sorcerer, with links to Avestan Theta Rawan priest and Tokarian superior force. The Atharvaveda is also occasionally referred to as Bergvangirasa and Brahmavida, after Brigu and Brahma respectively. Topic text The Atharvaveda is a collection of 20 books, with a total of 730 hymns of about 6,000 stanzas. The text is, state Patrick Olivelle and other scholars, a historical collection of beliefs and rituals addressing practical issues of daily life of the Vedic society, and it is not a liturgical Yajurveda style collection. Topic. Recensions The Karanavyuha, a later era Sanskrit text, states that the Atharvaveda had nine shakas, or schools, Pipalada, Stauda, Mauda, Sanakya, Jayala, Halada, Brahmavada, Devadarsa and Karanavadiya, of these, only the Shanakya recension, and the more recently discovered manuscripts of Pipalada recension have survived. The Pipalada edition is more ancient. The two recensions differ in how they are organized, as well as content. For example, the Book 10 of Pipalata recension is more detailed, more developed and more conspicuous in describing monism, the concept of oneness of Brahman, all life forms and the world. Topic. Organization The Atharvaveda Samhita originally was organized into 18 books khandas, and the last two were added later. These books are arranged neither by subject nor by authors as is the case with the other Vedas, but by the length of the hymns. Each book generally has hymns of about a similar number of verses, and the surviving manuscripts label the book with the shortest hymns as Book 1, and then in an increasing order a few manuscripts do the opposite. 
Most of the hymns are poetic and set to different meters, but about a sixth of the book is prose. Most of the hymns of Atharvaveda are unique to it, except for the one sixth of its hymns that it borrows from the Rigveda, primarily from its tenth mandala. The nineteenth book was a supplement of a similar nature, likely of new compositions, and was added later. The 143 hymns of the 20th book of Atharvaveda Samhita is almost entirely borrowed from the Rigveda. The hymns of Atharvaveda cover a motley of topics, across its 20 books. Roughly, the first seven books focus primarily on magical poems for all sorts of healing and sorcery, and Michael Witzel states these are reminiscent of Germanic and Hittite sorcery stanzas, and may likely be the oldest section. Books 8–12 are speculations of a variety of topics, while books 13–18 tend to be about life cycle rites of passage rituals. The Srauta Sutra texts Vaitana Sutra and the Kausika Sutra are attached to the Atharvaveda Shanaka edition, as are a supplement of Atharvan Prayashithas, two Pratishakyas, and a collection of Parishasthas. For the Pipalata edition of Atharvaveda, corresponding texts were Agastya and Pathanasi Sutras but these are lost or yet to be discovered. Topic. Dating and historical context The ancient Indian tradition initially recognized only three Vedas. The Rigveda, the verse 3.12.9.1 of Taittiriya Brahmana, the verse 5.32-33 of Aitareya Brahmana and other Vedic era texts mention only three Vedas. The acceptance of the Atharvanas hymns and traditional folk practices was slow, and it was accepted as another Veda much later than the first three, by both orthodox and heterodox traditions of Indian philosophies. The early Buddhist Nikaya texts, for example, do not recognize Atharvaveda as the fourth Veda, and make references to only three Vedas. Olson states that the ultimate acceptance of Atharvaveda as the fourth Veda probably came in the second half of the first millennium BCE. However, notes Max Muller, the hymns of Atharvaveda existed by the time Chandogya Upanishad was completed tilde 700 BCE, but were then referred to as hymns of Atharvangirasa. Fritz Stahl states that the text may be a compilation of poetry and knowledge that developed in two different regions of ancient India, the Kuru region in northern India and the Pankalas region of eastern India. The former was home to Pipalata, whose name was derived from the sacred fig tree named Pipala Sanskrit, this school's compositions were in the Rigvedic style. The Pankala's region contributions came from composer priests Angiruses and Bhargavas, whose style was unlike the metric Rigvedic composition, and their content included forms of medical sorcery. The Atharvaveda editions now known are a combination of their compositions. The core text of the Atharvaveda falls within the classical mantra period of Vedic Sanskrit, during the second millennium BC, younger than the Rigveda, and roughly contemporary with the Yajurveda mantras, the Rigvedic Kilani, and the Samaveda. There is no absolute dating of any Vedic text, including the Atharvaveda. The dating for Atharvaveda is derived from the new metals and items mentioned therein, it, for example, mentions iron as krsnaayas, literally, black metal, and such mentions have led the scholars to the estimate that the Atharvaveda hymns were compiled in the early Indian Iron Age, c. 1200-1000 BC, corresponding to the early Kuru kingdom. <laughs> Contents The Atharvaveda is sometimes called the Veda of magical formulas, an epithet declared to be incorrect by other scholars. The Samhita layer of the text likely represents a developing 2nd millennium BCE tradition of magico-religious rites to address superstitious anxiety, spells to remove maladies believed to be caused by demons, and herbs and nature-derived potions as medicine. Many books of the Atharvaveda Samhita are dedicated to rituals without magic and to theosophy. The text, states Kenneth Zeisk, is one of oldest surviving record of the evolutionary practices in religious medicine and reveals the earliest forms of folk healing of Indo-European antiquity. The Atharvaveda Samhita contains hymns many of which were charms, magic spells and incantations meant to be pronounced by the person who seeks some benefit, or more often by a sorcerer who would say it on his or her behalf. The most frequent goal of these hymns charms and spells were long life of a loved one or recovery from some illness. In these cases, the affected would be given substances such as a plant leaf, seed, root, and an amulet. 
Some magic spells were for soldiers going to war with the goal of defeating the enemy, others for anxious lovers seeking to remove rivals or to attract the lover who is less than interested, some for success at a sporting event, in economic activity, for bounty of cattle and crops, or removal of petty pest bothering a household. Some hymns were not about magic spells and charms, but prayer qua prayer and philosophical speculations. The contents of the Atharvaveda contrasts with the other Vedas. The 19th century Indologist Weber summarized the contrast as follows The spirit of the two collections Rigveda, Atharvaveda, is indeed widely different. In the Rigveda there breathes a lively natural feeling, a warm love for nature, while in the Atharva there prevails, on the contrary, only an anxious dread of her evil spirits and their magical powers. In the Rigveda we find the people in a state of free activity and independence, in the Atharva we see it bound in the fetters of the hierarchy and superstition. Jan Gonda cautions that it would be incorrect to label Atharvaveda Samhita as mere compilation of magical formulas, witchcraft and sorcery. While such verses are indeed present in the Samhita layer, a significant portion of the Samhita text are hymns for domestic rituals without magic or spells, and some are theosophical speculations such as, All Vedic gods are one. Additionally, the non Samhita layers of Atharvaveda text include a Brahmana and several influential Upanishads. Topic. Samhita Topic. Surgical and medical speculations The Atharvaveda includes mantras and verses for treating a variety of ailments. For example, the verses in hymn 4. 15 of the recently discovered Pipalata version of the Atharvaveda, discuss how to deal with an open fracture, and how to wrap the wound with Rahini plant Ficus infectoria, native to India, Topic. Charms against fever, jaundice and diseases Numerous hymns of the Atharvaveda are prayers and incantations wishing a child or loved one to get over some sickness and become healthy again, along with comforting the family members. The Vedic era assumption was that diseases are caused by evil spirits, external beings or demonic forces who enter the body of a victim to cause sickness. Hymn 5.21 of the Pipalata edition of the text, for example, states Topic. Remedy from medicinal herbs Several hymns in the Atharvaveda such as hymn 8.7, just like the Rigveda's hymn 10.97, is a praise of medicinal herbs and plants, suggesting that speculations about the medical and health value of plants and herbs was an emerging field of knowledge in ancient India. The Atharvavedic hymn states abridged topic. Spells and prayers to gain a lover, wife The contents of Atharvaveda have been studied to glean information about the social and cultural mores in Vedic era of India. A number of verses relate to spells for gaining a husband, or a wife, or love of a woman, or to prevent any rivals from winning over one's love interest. Topic. Speculations on the nature of man, life, good and evil The Atharvaveda Samhita, as with the other Vedas, includes some hymns such as 4.1, 5.6, 10.7, 13.4, 17.1, 19.5-3-54, with metaphysical questions on the nature of existence, man, heaven and hell, good and evil. Hymn 10.7 of Atharvaveda, for example, asks questions such as what is the source of cosmic order? What and where is planted this notion of faith, holy duty, truth? How is earth and sky held? Is there space beyond the sky? What are seasons and where do they go? Does skamba literally cosmic pillar, synonym for Brahman penetrate everything or just somethings? Does skamba know the future? Is skamba the basis of law, devotion and belief? Who or what is skamba? The Wonderful Structure of Man The Atharvaveda, like other Vedic texts, states William Norman Brown, goes beyond the duality of heaven and hell, and speculates on the idea of skamba or Brahman as the all-pervasive monism. Good and evil, sat and azat truth and untruth are conceptualized differently in these hymns of Atharvaveda, and the Vedic thought, wherein these are not dualistic explanation of nature of creation, universe or man, rather the text transcends these and the duality therein. 
Order is established out of chaos, truth is established out of untruth, by a process and universal principles that transcend good and evil. Topic. Prayer for peace Some hymns are prayer qua prayer, desiring harmony and peace. For example, topic. Brahmana The Atharvaveda includes Gopatha Brahmana text, that goes with Atharva Samhita. Topic. Upanishads The Atharvaveda has three primary Upanishads embedded within it. Topic. Mandaka Upanishad The Mandaka Upanishad, embedded inside Atharvaveda, is a poetic style Upanishad, with 64 verses, written in the form of mantras. However, these mantras are not used in rituals, rather they are used for teaching and meditation on spiritual knowledge. In ancient and medieval era Indian literature and commentaries, the Mandaka Upanishad is referred to as one of the Mantra Upanishads. The Mandaka Upanishad contains three Mundakams parts, each with two sections. The first Mundakam, states Rohr, defines the science of higher knowledge and lower knowledge, and then asserts that acts of oblations and pious gifts are foolish, and do nothing to reduce unhappiness in current life or next, rather it is knowledge that frees. The second Mundakam describes the nature of the Brahman, the Atman self, soul, and the path to no Brahman. The third Mundakam continues the discussion and then asserts that the state of knowing Brahman is one of freedom, fearlessness, liberation and bliss. The Mandaka Upanishad is one of texts that discuss the pantheism theory in Hindu scriptures. The text, like other Upanishads, also discusses ethics. Through continuous pursuit of satya truthfulness, tapas perseverance, austerity, samyajñana correct knowledge, and brahmacharya, one attains atman self, soul. Topic. Mandukya Upanishad The Mandukya Upanishad is the shortest of all the Upanishads, found in the Atharvaveda text. The text discusses the syllable Om, presents the theory of four states of consciousness, asserts the existence and nature of Atman soul, self. .The Mandukya Upanishad is notable for inspiring Gaudapada's Karika, a classic for the Vedanta school of Hinduism. Mandukya Upanishad is among the oft-cited texts on chronology and philosophical relationship between Hinduism and Buddhism. Topic. Prashna Upanishad The Prashna Upanishad is from the Paipalata school of Atharvavedans. The text contains six Prashna questions, and each is a chapter with a discussion of answers. The first three questions are profound metaphysical questions but, states Eduard Rohr, do not contain any defined, philosophical answers, are mostly embellished mythology and symbolism. The fourth section, in contrast, contains substantial philosophy. The last two sections discuss the symbol Om and Moksha concept. The Prashna Upanishad is notable for its structure and sociological insights into the education process in ancient India. Topic: <laughs> Manuscripts and translations. The Shanakya text was published by Rudolf Roth and William Dwight Whitney in 1856, by Shankar Pandurang Pandit in the 1890s, and by Vishva Banda in 1960–1962. Ralph Griffith translated some chapters into English in 1897, while Maurice Bloomfield published one of the most relied upon translations of the Shanakya recension of Atharvaveda in 1899. A corrupted and badly damaged version of the Pipalata text was edited by Leroy Carr Barrett from 1905 to 1940 from a single Kashmirian Sarada manuscript now in Tubingen. Durgamahan Bhattacharya discovered palm leaf manuscripts of the Pipalata recension in Odisha in 1957. His son Dipak Bhattacharya has published the manuscripts. Thomas Zender translated Book II of the Pipalata recension into German in 1999, and Arlo Griffiths, Alexander Lobotsky and Carlos Lopez have separately published English translations of its books 5 through 15. Influence Medicine and health care Kenneth Zeisk states that the 
Magico-religious medicine had given way to a medical system based on empirical and rational ideas." In ancient India by around the start of Christian era, still the texts and people of India continued to revere the ancient Vedic texts. Rishi Sushruta, remembered for his contributions to surgical studies, credits Atharvaveda as a foundation. Similarly, the verse 30.21 of the Karaka Samhita, states it reverence for the Atharvaveda as follows. Therefore, the physician who has inquired in verse about which Veda, devotion to the Atharvaveda is ordered from among the four, Rigveda, Samaveda, Yajurveda and Atharvaveda. The roots of Ayurveda, a traditional medical and health care practice in India, states Dominic Wujistic, are in Hindu texts of Karaka Samhita and Sushruta Samhita, both of which claim their allegiance and inspiration to be the Vedas, especially Atharvaveda. Kari and Katiyar state that the Indian tradition directly links Ayurveda to Atharvaveda. Wujistic clarifies that the Vedic texts are more a religious discourse, and while herbal health care traditions can be found in Atharvaveda, the purely medical literature of ancient India are actually Karaka Samhita and Sushruta Samhita, these two are the real roots of Ayurveda. Kenneth Zeisk adds Bila Samhita to this list. Literature <inaudible> 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 The verse 11.7.24 of Atharvaveda contains the oldest known mention of the Indic literary genre the Puranas, the first millennium AD Buddhist literature included books of magico-religious mantras and spells for protection from evil influences of non-human beings such as demons and ghosts. These were called Purita Pali, Purita and Rakamanta mantra for protection, and they share premises and style of hymns found in Atharvaveda. See also Ayurveda Charaka Samhita Sushruta Samhita Upanishads Vedas Merseburg Charms References Further reading Alexander Lobotsky, Atharvaveda Pipalata, Kanda 5, Harvard College, 2002. Thomas Zender, Atharvaveda Pipalata, Book 2, Idstein, 1999. Dipak Bhattacharya, Pipalata Samhita of the Atharvaveda, Volume 2, The Asiatic Society, 2007. Topic: <laughs> External links. Ralph Griffith, The Hymns of the Atharvaveda 1895-96, Full Text Maurice Bloomfield, Hymns of the Atharva Veda, Sacred Books of the East, v. 42-1897, Selection Sonica Recension, Atharva Veda Samhita, Sanskrit. Published at Titus Project. Accessed, April 14, 2014. William Whitney, Index Verborum to the Published Text of the Atharvaveda Vedas, University of Michigan. Madhav M. Deshpand, Recitational Permutations of the Sonakya Atharvaveda, Harvard University Press, based on six Atharvaveda manuscripts found in Pune, India. The Kashmiri Pipalata Recension of the Atharvaveda, Images of 16th-century Birch Bark Manuscript of Atharvaveda University Access Rights Required George Bowling and Julius Negelein, The Parisistas of the Atharvaveda, Johns Hopkins University with downloadable PDF file.